make, raise your hand right now if you know what country he's from. Yes, you. Australia. Australia, that's so close. New Zealand. Zealand. <laughs> yeah, Jack. New Zealand. New Zealand. Okay, Jack, do you have socks already? I do not have socks. You do not have socks? Would you like socks? Would yes, you like please. socks or a water bottle? I like a water bottle. Okay, you can have a water bottle. Thanks. There you go, New Zealand. Okay, now now here's what we need to think about. How big of a, of a country is New Zealand? Small. Tiny country. Um, somebody on their phone could probably Wikipedia right now, you know, how big the country is and then compare it to a city like Denver. It's probably not, I mean, the entire country probably has the same number of people as this state of Colorado. So there's not that many people there. And the, well, the reason I bring that up is it wasn't a huge group for Arthur Lanier to, to, uh, to choose from, to select from. He had four guys get Olympic medals in the same Olympics. And uh, my apologies for not knowing which Olympics that was, if it was Tokyo or if it was one prior to that. But Arthur Lydiard came to Boulder and he talked about, um, and he did a talk right before he, he, he passed. This was, um, he passed away maybe five or six years ago. And here's the ingredients that he talks about in his training. Long aerobic running, fartlek running, jogging, easy aerobic running. He talked about doing time trials. He had a lot of hill training in, his, in, in what he did, especially when they were trying to get ready to, to peak for races. And then he also had developmental races. Now, here's the deal. These are the ingredients that everybody would agree were that were in Arthur Lydiard's like training, you know, his training recipe for running faster. But what was weird, and I'll, I'll show you this picture. Here was, our, here's the four guys. Murray Hallberg, Peter Snell was this amazing 800, 1500 runner. John Davies and Bill Bally. Um, all these guys won Olympic medals. And the thing I want to highlight, first of all, is that these guys were rocking on their runs. They were running their, their runs really at a, at a really high aerobic level. There, there wasn't, you know, even though on his list, let's go back to his list. Look, there's jogging and easy aerobic running. But really, if you look at these, long aerobic running, fartlek running, time trials, hill training, and developmental races, those, those were workouts that, that were intense. And sometimes people misunderstand Arthur Lydiard as this guy that thought all you should do is go jog, okay? Is there anybody in this room who's hoping to run 100 miles this week? Please raise your hand if you're hoping to run 100 miles this week. Oh, come on. How about more than 80? You're not hoping to run more than 80? Oh. <laughs> okay, how many miles were, did you run last week? He's run 50 in the past three days. <laughs> You've run 50 in three days, you're on track to run like 120. You're going to take the rest of the week off. Well, all I'm trying to say is that, you know, Arthur Lydiard definitely believed in a lot of running. I mean, he was an advocate of running 100 miles a week or more. But I think sometimes in this country, we misunderstand him as like this jogging guy. This guy, how, how many of you have seen people run in those barefoot Vibram things? Okay? Almost everybody in here. You know, those people are going so slow. They're getting their miles in, but they're going this fast. I mean, relative, like, I, I, I saw a group today, I saw, I saw Marissa's group, you guys were not running slow. It was, hopefully it was still a very controlled run, but you guys definitely weren't going slow. And so, Arthur Lydiard's guys, they were rocking on a lot of their runs. And what I want to highlight is, a long aerobic run, you know, literally your weekly long run, doesn't have to be slow. One of the best campers from last week came up and asked me after, you know, after these presentations were over, he said, he said, should I be doing my long run faster? And I'll be honest, my first answer was, you know, he needs to talk to his coach and figure that out. But my second answer was a guy like him, he was, he's actually won a state championship already in cross country. A guy like him who's won a state championship trying to be better, he should probably be challenging the pace of his long runs. Okay, so... <laughs> The thing I want you to remember from this is actually this, the, the slide before with those guys, is that Lydiard's, Lydiard's guys were rocking, okay? Is that Arthur Lydiard did not believe in jogging. And I, I think that's one of the fundamentals of, of good training, is that you can run, you can run up tempo. Okay, here's the next one. Now we're going to talk about some aerobic workouts. So, if you look at this, we have, a, we have length of the run here and intensity of the run, okay? We have white and we have orange. And really what you should do, you should probably have two lines. You should probably have length of the run going, you know, short, um, I'm sorry, long to short and intensity, easy running to faster running. But I kind of combine them from white to orange to one to thin. Okay? So where, so the longest run is here, that's also the slower, slower to the run. Fartlet is in the middle and the threshold run is, is the fastest and the shortest. So let's first 
talk about uh, barley. And the reason I don't want to go too much into the long run is we just talked about it with Arthur Ligier. If you're going to do a long run, which you all should be doing, you should consider doing it up-tempo. But the bottom line is fartlek is just um, a, a Swedish word for speed play. And if you think of that word, that's really what it should feel like. You're just, just, just playing with the, the paces. Maybe you run cross-country pace for a couple minutes, then maybe you slow down. Then maybe you run two-mile pace and then slow down. Then maybe you run mile pace and slow down. Fartlek doesn't have to be the same pace all the time. And if, if you're ever around Kenyan athletes or you know, some of the, the European athletes, they really take fartlek seriously and they, they play with their, their paces. So, in my opinion, um, this is, should be a, always a continuous run, but the pace changes throughout the run. So, for example, you might take a five-minute segment with two minutes at race pace, followed by three minutes steady. So here, another way to look at it is you've got two minutes where you're running race pace. How many of you can, break, can run 20 minutes or faster for 5K? Raise your hands. It's only two minutes. It's only 10% of that. Okay? So that, is this hard? No. No. Two minutes at that pace isn't hard. When you do your three minutes, should you be running slow? No, because this wasn't that hard. This three minutes shouldn't be slow. Then you do another two minutes. That's not that hard. Now you do your another three minutes. That shouldn't be slow. But what most people do, so let's say, let's say this is pace up here, okay? And let's say you're running a good pace. You don't want it to drop way off under, in the three minutes and then pick it back up. What you really want it to do is just dip down a little bit so you recover and then bring the pace up for two minutes and then down for your three minutes and then up and down so you're just playing with pace. The other way you can think about this is your biomechanics should change. When you're running slow, your knee only comes maybe this high and your, your hands maybe only come this high. But when you're running fast, your knee comes up, your hands come in closer to your eyes, this, this arm is driving back. Okay, so you can think about it from a biomechanics perspective, that you're running with a certain amount of bio, or a certain type of biomechanics on the two minutes on, and then you're switching it up a little bit for the two minutes off. Yes? So would you say during the recovery goes slower, a little bit slower than aerobic, or just the same as aerobic? So you're saying, on the, re the question is on the recovery, do you go slower than aerobic, or a little, or, um, just about, the same as or about the same as your aerobic running pace? Um, well, how about this? Well, th think about it this way. I think the pace most of you guys are running today, we'll just call that your easy day pace. Is that fair for most people? That today was just kind of like an easy day? What I don't want to see you doing, don't run your easy day pace. We'll say that was down here. So easy day pace, easy day, for those of you that have been to camp before, you know I'm a horrible speller. Easy day pace on the three minutes, no. What we want on the three minutes is steady. And I learned this term from my college track coach, Mark Wetmore. He would use the term steady. I think he got it from Arthur Lydier. He was actually mentored by Arthur Lydier. Um, but what you want to do on a, on a good fartlek is followed by three minutes of steady running. It should be running, you know, that isn't completely, isn't completely comfortable. Okay? So are, are there any other questions on this? Okay. So here's the deal. I think fartlek is the most underutilized, I think fartlek runs are underutilized by American coaches and athletes. And I think one of the keys to this workout is that it teaches athletes to pay attention to your quote sensory data. Again, that's a term that I learned from my mentor, Mark Wetmore. Sensory data just means paying attention to your heart and lungs. That's different. How many of you think you're going to get an accurate split at the state championships in cross country? Okay, good. That was a trick question. Nobody raised their hand. How many of you would get an accurate split at the state championships at, in the 3200? Will the first lap split be accurate? Raise, raise your hand. That should be everybody, right? You get accurate lap splits in track, but in cross country, you just got to run by feel. And the cool thing about a fartlek workout is, is because you don't get splits, it's, it's teaching you to run by feel. So I'm a big believer in fartlek workouts where you just go, you try and run race pace, then you slow down a little bit, try and run race pace, slow down a little bit. Okay? All right, so that takes care of the fartlek uh, workouts. Let's talk about threshold workouts. 